Here we have two light bulbs. One is labeled 40 watts and the other is labeled 100 watts. Remember, wattage is the units for power, the rate at which energy is used. Why are bulbs, and indeed all appliances, labeled in power units? Here is a drawing of a filament. If we plug this into a battery, the electron current will flow through the filament. The electrons are picked up to a higher bleacher by the battery. They fall down bleachers as they pass through the bulb on their way back to the battery. A current falling through bleachers could be measured by multiplying the number of amps times the number of volts. An amp is a coulomb per second. A volt is a joule per coulomb. The product is actually a joule per second, which is a watt. A current times a bleacher drop is power. Let's take our two bulbs, 40 watts and 100 watts, and connect them to the wall outlet. The wall provides 120 volts worth of bleachers. The first thing we're going to do is connect the two bulbs in series with each other. Let's trace out the wire path to convince ourselves that this is indeed series. When we plug in the cord, something strange happens. It looks like only one bulb is on. But that's not right. They are both on. It's just that one is very dim. If I unscrew the bulb that looks like it's not on, the other one does go out. That means that the first bulb was doing something, we just couldn't tell what. Let's switch it up. Now we will take the same two bulbs, 40 watts and 100 watts, and connect them to each other in parallel. To do that, one side of each bulb goes to each side of the wall outlet. We can trace the path again and make sure we agree that this is parallel. This time, when we plug the lights in, they are both bright. It's hard to tell from the video which one is brighter, but they should be different. They are very different bulbs. In this case, if I unscrew a bulb, the other one does not go out. Also important, it doesn't get brighter either. Some people think that should happen. It does not. So here's a question. Is the 100 watt bulb the thicker filament or the thinner filament? Let's draw some pictures to help figure it out. We know from the reading that the light bulbs are filaments, thin pieces of wire that glow when they get hot. The only difference between these two bulbs is that one is a slightly thin filament and the other is a very thin filament. Let's call the thick one A and the thin one B. If we connect the filaments in series, the same current must pass through both filaments. The thinner filament will have a greater buildup of surface charges on its skin and will have more bleachers across it. Since ball B has the same current and more bleachers, ball B is brighter. If we connect the bulbs in parallel, something different happens. More current will go toward the wider filament, but both filaments will have the same number of bleachers. In this case, bulb A is brighter. So, we can conclude that a different bulb is brighter in each of the two cases. In the series case, the thin filament is brighter. In the parallel case, the fat filament is brighter. Again, the bulbs are labeled 40 watts and 100 watts. One of them was brighter in series, and one of them was brighter in parallel. Let's ask this question. How are these bulbs meant to be used? Are the outlets in your house wired together in series or parallel? I'll give you a second to think about that. It's clearly parallel, right? If you unplug a light in your house, all the other ones don't go out too. They stay on. So, we learned two important things from this. The wattage labels on appliances are written assuming you're using them in parallel, not series. And we learned that the higher the wattage label, the thicker the filament is. Let's take one more look at the power equation. We said that we can calculate power by multiplying the current times the number of bleachers the current moves through. There are other ways we could write this, if we consider Ohm's law. We can use Ohm's law to sub out the current, or we could use it to sub out the voltage. Why would we want three different versions of this equation? Well, we can use the first one if we don't know resistance, we can use the second one if we don't know current, and we can use the last one if we don't know voltage. Having all three versions will make solving math problems easier.